Chavre, how are you? I hope everyone is gesund, stark, and freilach, and begashmi, I hope everyone is healthy, strong, and happy physically and spiritually. As usual, in the last couple of months, we'll start with Tzedakah, G'day L'Tzedakah, Shemakarev Sagula. Mashiach should come now, the war should be over, all the houses should return, and it should just be like, Yehudim Moisa Oira, V'simcha, V'sosem, Yikar, Kein, Tiyalano. We'll also mention a prayer, and this is the bracha, one of the brachas that we say, we're going to read the Megillim, it's from this Matzai Shabbos, and Sunday morning. Baruch Ato Hashem, Melekeinu, Melech Oilom. Shaoso nisim la voiseinu, bayomi mohem is We are thanking Hashem that He made miracles for our forefathers in those days at this time. So too He should make miracles for Am Yisrael right now. In general, when it comes to the Megillah, I'm sure we mentioned this before, there's a famous Torah of the Baal Shem Tov. So today's lesson is a lesson for Parashat Vayikra. It's a lesson for the festival of Purim. And also the Shabbos, the Shabbos Zohar. We read about Amolik. And now we have to wipe out Amolik. So what is the connection between all these three things? So concerning the Megillah, everyone knows there's the famous title of the Baal Shem Tov, Mamish HaMoyedik Abshat, Kol HaKoyres HaMegillah Mefreya. Whoever reads the Megillah, Megillah says the backwards, out of sequence, is Loyotza, he's not Yotza. In other words, because since the whole miracle has to do with a certain chronological sequential order, and every single detail follows in perfect order, so if you read it backwards, you're not going to really be able to appreciate the miracle. When you read every single detail, here he killed, Achashverosh kills his wife because of a minister. And then there's this, and Mordechai saved Achashverosh's life. And whatever, every single detail has to be in sequence, etc., etc. And how Esther becomes the queen. The Baal Shem Tov said, that what is the meaning of Kol HaKedis and Megillu Mefreya? Lo Yotza! If somebody reads the Megillah and he says, Lumefreya, it's a nice story that happened many, many, many years ago, but it has no relevance to my life right now. Lo Yotza, you missed the whole point. You have to listen, listen closely to the story of the Megillah and take the lessons, what you meant to learn from it and internalize it, make it premiers and see how it makes a very big difference in your life. So this was said concerning the Megillah Sester on these words of the Maimon Azal, Kol HaKeres and Megillah Mefreya Le Yotza. This applies to every single Yontif. And every single Indian in Yiddishkeit only gets stronger, more powerful, and we have to think about it even more deeper. But the fact that we learn it out from this Kol HaKeres and Megillah Mefreya Le Yotza seems to imply that especially when it comes to the Megillah, we have to meditate and think about this idea of the message of the Megillah and how it applies and it's relevant right now. And we have to take a, take a lesson. We'll speak about one lesson today. Now, in Parshas Vayikra, starting a new Sefer, and it talks about Kabonis. And the Parsha spoke about different Kabonis, speaks about different Kabonis, and it mentions first, if the high priest, the Kayan HaMashiach, is going to do an Aveda, do something wrong, unintentionally. And then it says, call das Yisro, Yishku, if all of the community is going to do something wrong, unintentionally. And what that's talking about is when the Sanhedrin made a ruling, which was a mistake, and everybody did the right thing. They listened to the Sanhedrin, but what the Sanhedrin said was the wrong thing. They made a mistake. And it also says, Vim nefesh achas sechta. But over here, when it comes to a nosi, the Pesach says, Asher nosi yechta. When a ruler sins, and it goes on the melech, the king. So the question is, why does it say, Asher nosi yechta, asher, when every other place it said im, 
By the way, I'm saying a sicha of the Rebbe Vayikra, Chelik Yud Zayin, the fifth sicha. There's a lot more to what I'm going to say t- in, in the sicha printed. I'm just going to speak one point, but it's Moiri Dika Sicha. A lot more than what I'm saying. Anyway, so Rashi says, Asher Nosi Yechto Loshen Asher. Why does it say Asher? The word Asher over here, instead of every other place where it said Im, if, so it could have said over here, Lechere Asher Nosi Yechto, if the Nosi will sin. Why does it say Asher? Which means to say when, not if, but when, but that's another interpretation. But over here it says, we're translating it as if, so why does it say Asher? So Rashi says, Loshan Asher, Asher Adir. Fortunate is the generation. Shan Nosi Shaloi Noisim Leiv Lohavi Kapar Al Shayigose. That the ruler sets his heart to bring an atonement for his unintentional sin. Kalvachemer, all the more so. Shemischaret Al Zde Noisav. That he has regrets over his intentional sins. So we hear the Rebbe has a couple of clots kashas on this. First of all, this. Maimir Azal really comes this thing that says Ashri Hadir that Shanosi Shaloi brings a carbon, a sacrifice to his tone for his unintentional sin, is a Gemara and Hodius, Tafyuram and Bays, and over there the Loshan is a different Loshan. It says Ashanosi Yechta, Omer Rabbi Echlam and Zakai, Rabbi Echlam and Zakai said Ashri Hadir, it says Asher, Asher Hadir, fortunate generation. That the Nasi brings a carbon on his shagig. And then it says, At the Mao So if the Nasi has to bring a carbon and we see that he has to atone for his sin, sure all the more so when it comes to a commoner. So the question is, why does Rashi change the wording from the Gemara? That over there it says, Im nasi shalai mevi carbon. That's what the Gemara says. But over here it says that he's nice and lave. Lohavi kapara. Why does Rashi make that difference? The Rebbe also asks, why is it Ashri Adir? L'chaira, it's more about the leader. It's a statement about the leader. That he's an honest person. And even though this, this could be one a Pashtab shot, by the way, that a leader, a man of integrity, and if he's a leader, it means because he's worthy of being a leader. So sometimes you might have a dilemma. You did something wrong, and by admitting that you did something wrong, that could jeopardize your position. You might say, cover that tater, cover the office. It's not about me, it's about my position, my authority. And if I'm going to show that I'm fallible, <laughs> so then people are going to say, just like it makes a mistake like this, this happened on Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, it could be something else. Because he's not perfect. You see? Look, he made a mistake. And he might say, that's going to jeopardize my whole position, weaken my whole position, and if I won't be able to lead properly, because they'll see that I have these problems. So therefore, we say, no, that this is a lesson for leaders. They have to realize the truth is the truth is the truth. Nothing bad will come out of the truth. And on the contrary, they have to see that you're man enough, you're great enough to be able to admit that you made a mistake. We have to see that you're a man of truth. And even by Moshe Rabbeinu in the story of B'Tzalel, what comes first, the Kalim or the, the bias, so to speak, the structure, Moshe Rabbeinu told B'Tzalel, you're right, whatever the story is over there in the explanation, I'm just bringing out the point, that we see that whenever there was a question that maybe we didn't get it right for whatever the explanation shouldn't be, then you have to say, and that's the lesson over here. But why is it Ashrei Hadar? What does that mean? Okay, so the Rebbe learns a Moshe the Kapshat. Or to another issue. And that is the Rebbe explains that the word Asher, because Asher is like because that. In other words, there's another question over here. The Rebbe is saying that Rashi is Bavarnik. And the question is the Korba that came just before was the communal sin offering. And the question is why does the whole 
Adas Yisrael have to bring this carbon after it wasn't their fault at all. They were following orders. They were following instructions. From who? From the Sanhedrin. So why is it considered that they, the community, has to bring a carbon? So it's a question. So therefore, the Rebbe explains, that's why afterwards comes this posik to teach us that guess what? That even if you're a king, but if you make a mistake, you have to bring a carbon. What's the difference if the mistake was because the Sanhedrin said something wrong and you followed their instructions, even though you were meant to follow their instructions, but through you, something which was not right happened. And therefore we see even someone like the Nasi, who could have this problem, like we said before, that he might even have a doubt whether he should do such a thing because it might jeopardize his whole future leadership. Nevertheless, he has to be a carbon. That's one part of why this person comes afterwards and why it says Asher. But what's the main point? And this is the Chiddush of the Rev of it, that's unbelievable. That the message, this is like the antidote. What's the antidote? The antidote that such a thing should not happen again in general. The idea of a mistake and how much you have to take it to be like on guard. So therefore you'll double check, double, like even the case with the, with, with, with the Sanhedrin, maybe you'll double check. Is that what they said? Is that what? But, it's, but in general, the lesson of the leader, to prevent mistakes. This is what Rashi means of it when Rashi says, Shanosi shaloi noisen leiv. Rashi is stressing that the Chiddush over here is not the fact that he just brought a carbon, the Nasi. Because of course he brought a carbon. Because when you do, when there's a mistake, when there's a shaking, you have to bring a carbon. What, whatever the explanation is, and the Rebbe explains over there, sicha in the sicha that when a shaking happens, that means it has some connection to you. That itself is the message that there's some connection to that act. There's some connection to something which is against Hashem, and therefore you're not 100 percent pure. You're not 100 percent innocent, so to speak. You are such a being such an entity, that a mistake could come about through you. And that's why you have to take it very serious when even you commit a shaygig, inadvertently and unwillingly, but nevertheless, you have to bring a carbon. But the word is not that the fact that he brought a carbon. That's not the point. The point is nice and lave, that he was crushed, that he was decimated, that it bothered him. That he was very upset. And when the followers, when the nation saw how much it bothered the Nasi, the fact that he did something wrong, so that automatically brought the rest of the nation not to do such a thing in the first place. Because they saw, wow, look what kind of difference it made to him. And he's in pretty good shape. But nevertheless, it bothered him so much. So even if if a person like that is bothered by something like that, something which is shaking, I should for surely be careful about such things because I have a lot of other things that I have to worry about, so to speak. So I should try to be extra careful not to add to any of things. We see how much he took it seriously. It must be a very serious thing. And this is how the Rebbe answers, Ashrei Hadoyer. Why is it Asher Adair? Because the fact that the leader shows that level of how much it bothered him, so therefore it has an impact and it influences the whole Dair. Everyone is under his leadership. So that answers all the questions. And from this we see it, it's about life in general. I mean, just to give an example, but it's not Mamish such a good example. Imagine you embarrass somebody. You embarrass somebody. Just to, just to bring it down in a way that we can relate to. Imagine you embarrass somebody or you hurt somebody's feelings. Oh, you hurt somebody's feelings. Or you embarrassed them unwillingly. It was like, you know, today we have a super sensitive generation. People say, I'm offended. Okay, but, but let's take this seriously for a second. So you said something. I speak from my own experience, you know. We fabreng in yeshiva sometimes or we give a share. Sometimes you make a joke. 
but you don't realize that not everyone has thick skin. Some students have, <laughs> have thicker skin. Some students have thin skin. You have to know who you're dealing with. By the way, usually I, 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 when I bring with the Bachrim, I want to make it more close to break the ice and to break barriers. So I'll address, you know, them individually. Hello, Rosencrantz, Weinstein, Goldstein, and say something. But sometimes you have a Bachr who comes over to me, you know, after the Fabengin, and I'll say, Rabbi Winner, from now on I want to ask you a request. Never mention my name in public. Okay? And I know that this person is, is more of the sensitive sort. And by the way, the other Bachrim that love it, they love the attention, they love when you have this sort of banter with them, joke around. They enjoy it. They enjoy it. But then you have some, another sort of uh, student that doesn't enjoy it. Anyways, imagine I said something, or somebody said something to a student, and you realize the student became visibly upset. So, there's one swatter, one side of you says, you know what, I can wait till tomorrow before I'm going to ask him for forgiveness. But then it could be another thing. Sometimes you say, no, don't even wait till tomorrow. You shouldn't go to sleep at night thinking that you saw the way he was upset and you just, just go further. It can't be like that. You, whoever you are that caused this to another person, should also be thinking to himself, if you're a sensitive person, if you're a person that lives with ethics, you should be thinking to yourself, I don't want a night to go by that that person should feel hurt because of something that I did, even though I didn't do it intentionally. So I'm saying the same thing over here. If this is a Nasi, and Ruchnis is what's Negeya, and a Lakus is Negeya, Godliness, so the fact that something not right, something is wrong in the universe, something not right happened through him, so he has to fix it. And this is what it means of a nice and lame. It's not only the fact that he brought the carbon. It was something that was obvious in an evident manner by looking at this Nasi that he was upset about it. And this is what causes the most impact by his followers. So we're talking about the passion, the emotion. And the same thing is, by the way, when it comes to teaching, especially, let's say, for example, you know, if someone would ask, what's the most important thing in teaching? I would say you should be excited about the material. If you're very passionate and excited about the material, so that will make the most deepest impact on the students. It's not only about how well you explain it. It's the passion that's involved. And they'll never forget it like, wow, this rabbi, he was going wild. He went to town when he spoke about this subject. And this is what Rashi means over here when Rashi says, nice and lave. That's the main chidush. And it's the noise and lave that prevents the whole generation from committing Avedis Bishayik. Okay, now let's talk about the Megillah. There's a Muridik word from the Fidik Rebbe about Mordechai. In capital Dalar of the Megillah it starts off and it says that Mordechai Yoda. As Kolosh and Asa, Vayikra Mordechai is begodov, Vayubashak, Vayifa, Vayitzi, Betechir, Vayizak, Zoko, Gdeilo, Mara. Mordechai knew everything that had happened. He found out about this decree of annihilation of the entire Jewish nation. Mordechai tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out through the city crying a loud and bitter cry. So, first of all, we see right over here, Mordechai's reaction is very, very extreme, even though he knew from the three children and the famous Medrash, which I don't want to get into right now, that it's going to be good. But he wanted to bring the Yidin to Tshuva, so therefore, this is what he did. He tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes. You can imagine, the biggest tzaddik of his generation is walking around with sackcloth and ashes. Shock! Shock! So it had an impact. And then he went out through the city, crying a loud and bitter cry. And then it says... Esther found out about it, his cousin, and she wanted to find out from, she sent her soch, what's going on over here, why are you doing this? So then her soch went to look for Mordechai, 
Ace Kalasha Karohu. Mordechai told over everything that had happened to him and about the whole decree and how Haman had, had bought off the king, etc. So it says over here about the decree that this is something that happened to him. Then later on in the Megillah, after Haman walked Mordechai with the horse and everything, by his sapper, Haman lazeres ishtay lechol evav, es kol ashekaro, everything that happened to him, and they told him this is a sign that it's bad news for you. So the Friedrich Rebbe points out a moiri dika moiri dika word. And I'm going to read it to you from inside, and I would like you yourselves, if you have a sefer asichas, tafshin hei, that's a talks of the Friedrich Rebbe of 1945, Purim, and page 77 in Sefer HaSichas Tav Shin Hei Sorry Oy. Hold on a second Page 73 Sefer HaSichas Tav Shin Hei Page 73 There's many Oasis over here but you look it up yourself where he speaks about Avis Yisrael and how it has to be Vinifilinu we have to be distinguished in our Avis Yisrael but over here he says a word the contrast between the Karo of Mordechai and the Karo of Haman. And that one brought the other. That's an amazing. It says in the Megillah, the same expression, I'm reading from inside, page 73, Oisvav. It says the same expression in the Megillah about by Haman and by Mordechai, even though they're two opposites. By Mordechai it says, Ashakaro, and by Haman it says, Ashakaro. And he says, Mordechai had Tzadik, who was the Reish of Sanhedrin. So, and he was Yeshem B'Shan Melech. So he was a rich person. And after he screamed the whole scream, he said that all this was because of the decree. Gleichli is what mit him getroffen. And he says, Which means that the Rebbe once spoke about by Fabrengen. The truth is, Mordechai didn't have to worry about himself at all. First of all, he's a cousin of the queen. So even if there was a decree, Esther would make sure that Homan would not get harmed. Second of all, he was a member of the parliament. Yesha B'Shana Melech. Third of all, he could have called in that favor that he saved the king's life. So therefore, there's no way that anything would have ever happened to Mordechai. But nevertheless, he experienced this whole thing as if it was happening to him. That's what it means, Ashakaro'u. Karo'u. By Haman, when he says Ashakaro'u, he's talking about something that happened to him. Not that it's about anyone else. But by Mordechai, it was something that was happening. It was about the nation. But he took it personally completely, even though he was the least of the, anybody who had to worry about such a thing. And then the Friedrich Rebbe says, If something bad happens to another person, you have to feel the pain of another, as if it's happening to you. Not only do you share the pain and you take a part in it, nor but just as if it was happening to you. It's not so easy, but at least we have the aspiration. And that's what it means, Ashakaro, by Mordechai. And the Friedrich Rebbe says the same thing is about if something good is happening. When there's a tsar of Yechaver, when there's pain, somebody's going through a tragedy, God forbid, or suffering, so then you have to feel it. And the same thing is true when it comes to a joy, when it comes to a simcha. It's not only like it's your brother's simcha, of course it's like your brother's, but it's like your thing. You're going through the pain, and you're feeling the joy. So that's the lesson. But the powerful thing is, besides for the fact that the Friedrich Rebbe says this is how he's supposed to be, he says it was that feeling of Achtus, Mordechai's Karo, that brought about Haman's Karo, that he had his downfall. So we see the direct correlation, the Friedrich Rebbe says, 
That's our Avas Yisrael, our Achtus, Yachad and Atzeach, will bring down the enemy. And the same thing as Pasha Zohar. Everyone knows the famous Vort in Chsidis. The Pasuk says, Ashakor Chobaderech, that a Molik encountered you, happened upon you on the way. And Chsidis elaborates the word Korcha comes from Kar, coldness. That what's what's the what's the trait of a molik? He says, "What are you getting so excited about it? He saw miracles. Don't worry, I could still stay the same. I don't have to change." He says, "Don't care." And this is a famous line from Eli Wazel. Everyone knows this. A famous quote: "The opposite of love is not hate; it's indifference." And he goes on to say a couple of things: the opposite of this, and the opposite of that is all indifference. Why? Because indifference. The Rebbe also speaks about it in a couple of places in the Kutisichas, that when you go Mephzoyim and the person gets angry, that's at least a reaction. It's something to work with. But when the person's indifferent, there's no Hazoza, there's no sign of life. And the same thing is in general. The, t- the reason why the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference, is because when the person's indifference, he thinks, I'm neutral, I don't want to get involved, he's not bad. There's no hope. There's no hope. When a person has a, 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 a feeling of hate, so then you can deal with it. You can deal with this person. You can get into an argument. You could try to win it over. You could try to transform it. But if it's indifferent, and that's what Amalek is. And we know there's that yayim yayim that says, Fishin kelt and kfide da din mechitza. That's the yayim yayim of Tezayin Shvat, if I remember correctly. And... Between coldness and heresy is a slight barrier. It starts with coldness. A mullet comes along and says, Don't get excited. Just miss us on Hashem and the mother. Do it dry, do it plain, do it mechanical, etc., etc. And we say, No. The way an amolik is the worst midr. This is something which has to be uprooted completely. And we have to see it in ourselves. Somebody says, you know what? Relax, relax, relax. And this is the f- war that we have to fight against, which is you have to be on fire. A chosid is a shtick fire. You have to be on fire. Nayim Yem over there in Tezayin Shvat, he says, Lenin und Davin in Medafin mit a bread. You have to learn in Davin with a fire, with a passion, with an excitement. And by the way, this is getting back to the first thing, but that Ashri Hadir, that the Nasi, Nice and lave. He put his heart into it. So the same thing you see by the Rebbe, and you see also by Mifzoyim. There's so many stories where the Rebbe would write to somebody in a letter, Mohir, which means, you know, Special Express. And the Rebbe would say, I'm sending this letter, Special Express, so that one night shouldn't pass. They should have this sort of question in your mind, or this sort of doubt. And the same thing is this stories and stories about how there's a businessman who's on a trip, and he, there was one famous story, he was going back to London, and he met somebody in another state in the United States, and he was in the United States by the Rebbe in New York. He told the Rebbe that he had, he's taking a flight tonight, but uh, next time he comes, he's going to bring this other Jew, I don't know which state he was in, maybe Detroit, he'll bring him a pair to him. And then the Rebbe answered him, you're going, you're going to London? Before you got that person a pair to him? And this was like insane, because he had to, he had to get a flight that night, and then he had to go buy a pair of film, and he only had a couple of hours to do that and get it to that other state. So, but the story was he ended up doing that. And the point is, because how could one day go by that that he shouldn't put on film? And then obviously, that person put on film for the rest of his life, that other person who was in Detroit, I think. Why? Because that itself made the impression. Like the Reb explains over here about the Nason Lave. When you see how it's so important that you go so much out of your way to make sure that that person should not pass one day anymore for the rest of his life, putting on film, then he'll put on film. Like, you know, it's so important how you impress upon the other person. And what we realize from that sikha about nice and lave, it's that it's your reaction, your emotional reaction, which leaves the most powerful impression. So this is the lesson I will take from Parshas Vayikra, that Rashi, Nason Lev, Nason Libay. And this is the story of Mordechai Shakaro. He was a leader. And because he was a leader, everything that was going on by the others, by the rest of the nation, was 
like it's happening to him personally. And the same thing is about a mulik. The way to fight a mulik is to remember that it's so easy to just be indifferent. It's so easy to say, I want to be neutral. It's so easy to say, I don't want to get involved. It's so easy to say, I want to be a bystander. And by the way, this is right now going on, Baruch Hashem, the good news is we see a lot of people that were disassociated and alienated from Yiddishkeit and completely secular, but they decided that we have to take a stand right now after what happened in October 7th. And this is the Hira, the lesson that we have to take from Mordechai and fighting Amalek and Pasha Vayikra. Every one of us should take a stand about things that are going on in our Dalit Amis that might be wrong. And I see it also all the time. There's different situations that happen. And, you know, everybody is, you know, let's not try to make anybody upset. Of course, the main thing is obviously Shiloh. But you must take a stand and you must show passion about something which is sometimes just a shayge, just, that's what I'm calling it. And they wish to help, that we should work on our obviously Shiloh to take part in another person's joy, not only take part, but act as if it, work on it so it should be like it's my joy. And the same thing if something, has is, there's any pain or suffering by another Yid, we have to project and emanate that we're in this all together. And the Ebishu should help that it should talk be like we started today, Shir Sha'osa Nisim Lavi Seinu, by Yom Mehem Bizman Azeh, Begula Mitzvah Shleimo, Take it from Yad Mamish, posting from my home, Bezim is Barach, your man in Melbourne.